Hey guys, Andy here. So I have with me today the Motorola Moto G6. The Moto series or the Moto G series has always had a bit of a sort of a special place on my channel I feel because the first, the original Moto G kind of blew up for me. Um, as in, it went, you can call it viral, but it just, it was my, one of my first videos, it just went massive. Uh, the original Moto G unboxing and first look video is now at sort of 108,000 views and it just, it seems to go woof. Um, and the other videos I did around it were all very popular as well. And it was just one of the first phones that I bought that the channel really seemed to get a lift from. Um, add to that the fact that it was just one of the best phones of all time, value for money, bang for buck, bang for buck, buck for bang, bang for buck. Um, one of the best phones for its for its price range. I mean, I was I, remember, I bought three of them in all because I bought them for my mum, my my aunt I had a backup one myself, I think, or my review phone, I suppose. Um, and I think I was getting. I mean, at the time, I, I'm, I'm sure, but one of them was like sixty quid because I had some Tesco vouchers you can buy from Tesco Direct and this that, and the other. But it wasn't that hard to buy them for sort of nine hundred pounds, and they were super smooth. They were just it was really impressive. Pretty much stock Android. Um, Terrible camera, but actually really good phone. Anyway, I'm waffling on about a phone that's not the one that we're doing the review of today. So, um, it is still, this is new sealed in box. Technically it's second hand, but the uh, person hadn't opened it, so I got a reasonably good price. It will be for sale again after I've done all my videos, if anyone's looking for one. And obviously you see there, Lenovo. So Lo Lenovo bought Motorola. I probably have looked into the history of it all, but Motorola has been passed around a little bit. They were Google for a while, then Lenovo bought them. I think Google stripped all the all the um, patents and stuff. So there is the phone itself. Oh wow, that does feel. Oh, it's got the case on it. I was say it does feel quite thick, but it's got a case. I'm going to take that off. I'm not really a case fan. Um, I prefer just to not drop my phones. Really. Uh, well, that's ooh, it's just one. Of, it's a weird texture inside that, but I guess it's just to give it a bit of grip. Um, yeah, it's, it's, I like that they give it with the phone, why not? So I quite like that, uh, that stick and cover. So in fact, we can see, we might as well go through some of the specs while we've got them here on the screen. So 5.7 inch Full HD uh, screen, it's actually 2160 by 1080, so it's the 18 by 9 ratio, which gives about 424 pixels per inch, which is pretty good. Anything above Anything above like 350 is pretty good to be fair. So 424 is pretty good. The screen ratio is 75.4, which a couple of years back would have been quite impressive. <laughs> and then now it's yeah, it's okay. Um so it's dual dual lens on the back, and they're 12 megapixels and 5 megapixels. The 12 megapixels is f1.8, which is actually pretty good. The lower the better. Uh, the 5 megapixel is one point is 2.2, sorry, but I think that that's just used for the depth perception, not really for actual pictures. While we're at it, the front-facing camera, maybe I'm gonna just see if I can get it started while I'm talking. Not that I can see what's, there we go, I can see it's lit up behind. Um, the front-facing camera is eight megapixels, I think, with f2.2. I say I think, because this is eight megapixel or 16 megapixel on GSM Arena. So 1.8 gigahertz, uh, octa-core, A53, it's got three, Hello, motor. It's got 3000 milliamp hour Li ion battery. It's got a fingerprint sensor in the bottom here, and it will take an SD card. So now we've read through those. Let's see if we can. So there we go. We reveal the reveal the device behind. So I've booted up. I've not really looked looked around it just yet properly though. So we've been through the specs. The design itself, um, I think that's quite nice. I can't tell. That's a, that's a sticker on the bottom there. Oh, that's interesting. I wonder if this whole CE thing comes off then. I didn't check what colours it's supposed to be. This is kind of a, a bluey, a bluey black colour by the looks. Let me just a quick look on the base of the deep indigo. It's called. That's actually really nice. So it's not quite black. It's got a kind of a hint of sort of blue, well indigo, I suppose. Um, it feels good in the hand. It is 167 grams and 8.3 millimeters thick. And actually that's that's a really nice comfortable, that stickery bit on the bottom is annoying me. Let me just see if I can, because I can already feel it as I, there we go. I can already feel it as I sort of move the phone around in my hand. It actually feels really light, almost like, 
I mean, 167 grams is 167 grams, but that feels quite light, maybe for the size of the phone, because it's not metal, I suppose. Um, it does feel quite light, almost like I've still got to put the battery in or something. What else did I mention spec-wise? So it's got four gig of RAM. The GPU is the Adreno 506. I should also point out, I suppose, this is the regular G6. There is a Play version, which is kind of the budget end of things, which is actually a bit more like last year's uh, specs. And then there's the Plus version, which is a slightly bigger screen, slightly faster processor, um, and a few other bits. Uh, check out the, the main review when I do it. I'll give a bit more of a comparison of the differences. Uh, I think we've got 64 gig of storage in this one, but I think it does come in 32 as well. I'm going to quick look on the box again just to see if I can see, and I can't. So, oh, well, it says approximate available storage 51 gig. So I'm guessing it's going to be a 64 gig model. Um, it takes a nano SIM somewhere. There we go. And I will, again, in the remainder of you, I'll, I'll have that open and it feels slightly plasticky there. Um, I'll have that open and check if it's dual SIM, because again, I'm not entirely sure. GSM Marina List said it maybe is dual SIM. Uh, so I think I've been through all of the actual specs. So let's, do we get English? United King, there we go. Let's go. Now actually before, because this is, we're going to come back to that in a second, before I get too carried away. This is the unboxing element of the video. It's quite nicely presented, I think. The box and the colours and the... So we've got the SIM tray tool there. Legal and regular, whatever it is. Can't really see that's that exciting. Okay, look at that, wow. That's quite a long tray, isn't it? So it is It is dual SIM and takes a micro SD card. Let's slide that back in there. The micro, just there. There it is, the micro USB Type-C charging cable. Presume those bits are empty. There's the charging brick. We will see how quickly it charges and such for the main review. So that's generally okay. So that's supposed to slot into that bit there. Look, like so. Yes, yeah, so it's quite nicely packaged. Let's come back to the device itself. Let's set up as new. So um, actually, what I will do at this point, I'll get it all logged into everything. I get a couple of things installed like Geekbench. Um, I'll probably nip outside, take a couple of quick pictures, and I'll come back just for a sort of a first look around the device. So I'm back, I'm logged in, I'm set up, I've installed a couple of bits and pieces, I've dashed outside to take some photos, um, and I'm back. So there's various different things that pop in it. I do actually seem to remember that actually the Moto G has some quite handy little um, bloatware, I guess you have to call it in some ways. So some stuff I'm not so bad about, LinkedIn, Outlook, I had to kind of skip through that in the settings and I didn't want to add things there. But we're getting some of the things popping in. So for example, enable attentive display. Keep the screen away. Yeah, go on then. Attentive display on. Now, you can use the camera to monitor me, which, uh, which might use a bit more battery than normal. And the other, the other, uh, Notification I've kept to show you. Moto experiences. Moto suggestions. Fine. Oh, I thought it'd go into it though, which is, I think, here. So, a night display, reduce blue light on the screen at night. You can do that if you want. I'm not going to. Plenty of storage, no suggestions at this time. Estimated battery life two hours. Now, I did plug it in briefly um, while it was doing lots of updates, but it was doing lots of updates, so um, you kind of expect it's going to be using a lot more power than it normally would. Um, so even though we've got kind of half a battery in two hours to go, it'll it'll learn. When we've kind of got into a normal pattern of things, I'm sure it'll be much better. Happy people to sleep will stop running in the background. So there's no power intensive apps at this point. Fine. So then features moto actions actually I quite like moto actions three finger screenshot touch and hold on your screen all right yeah let's do that viewing full screen uh, yeah turn it on I like it one button now use the fingerprint sensor to navigate sounds interesting okay try it out Tap on the sensor quickly. Yep. Yeah. It's right from the right to left. 
go all the way to the edge okay Let's give it a try yep it's right from left to right let's turn it on and let's hope i don't forget what the different navigations are um double cross shot for torch twist for quick can't twist your wrist twice to open the oh, okay yeah yeah well, let's just try that one and it used to be turns it to the front for hello yeah so i quite like that i can't remember how we go back that's it um swipe down uh, no pick up to stop ringing no flip yeah i, I quite like the, i mean I, I barely ever use it um give us kind of your first ones um that's not at the minute so maybe later so let's go back i see those are two extra things so yes yeah, some of the actual the the bloat is actually quite good so i do like the twist for the camera i mean i don't know quite why the double power button doesn't work for the camera i thought it should I mean that's fairly android standard just just turns it off um opportunity to show you the fingerprint sensor seems pretty quick to me sorry you can't see oh well that was very slow actually that was quicker so on the whole which was it that's there we go that's the app switcher that's fine um on the whole yeah not too bad fingerprint sensor what else do you want to have a look at so let's do i did install although where did it go it didn't i did install geekbench and it's updated it god damn. all right we'll run it anyway i'll put on my older version because i've been using geekbench 3.4 point something or other forever so to keep the same scores i don't like to change the version of geekbench basically but I forget if I don't turn off the auto update, it updates it with all the other apps to the latest version. To be fair, I probably should now switch up to the newer version. If I start doing all my phones on both of them, I suppose I can start building up a database of the new scores and the old scores. Um, anyway, we don't particularly want to watch this, so I will skip ahead to the end. So you join me as we're nearing the end. I should have looked at what time it was when I uh, started up because this seems to be taking quite a long time um funny enough i installed it on my pixel 2 xl when this was on about i don't know 15 percent or something and that's just finished just as a point of reference because i've not used geekbench 4 so that was a 61 39 okay now if that relates in any way to what the scores were on the previous version of geekbench that's not too bad around about the 4000 mark um is reasonable so yeah that's okay for what you're paying i think i've not actually mentioned this device is i think it's 240 brand new maybe it's 230. um so it's kind of the upper end of budget i suppose and it's the way the moto series has gone the moto g series has gone from the first one like i say you could buy for less than 100 a lot of the time it's not as cheap as that now um but it's not too bad so that's the benchmark let's have a quick look at youtube and see what the video looks like so and hopefully that's well, that's interesting it's just the yeah because i guess it's the hey what's up guys this is liam wiggle on your overwatch back with a new video today i want to talk about some abilities that people use wrong or don't optimize in their games so the volume seems quite good it's definitely well it's coming out of the top because i guess the speaker's somewhere in there or yeah i assume the image itself I'd say that looks pretty good, doesn't it? I don't know, maybe... I think Overwatch is quite a good example. It's quite a lot of, sort of bright colours and things going on, and it looks pretty good to me, I would say. Um, see if we can grab one of the... Why can't I... That's, that wasn't what I meant to do. But that's quite cool. Oh, why can't I bring... There we go. That, that, well, that helps. Oh, yeah. I'm trying to bring it... <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to bring in the buttons and I've turned the buttons off and actually that's what we do now um, I don't know what else I have no idea who or what this is So 
see I'll say it I would say it sounds and looks pretty good. There you go. I remember what the back button is this time. So that's uh, that's interesting. And then if we move on to the camera, as I say, I dashed outside um, to take a few pictures. The amazing time it was. I don't know if you're aware. Interesting side notes. And if you're watching this months from now, it makes well, you know, whatever. Uh, basically, it's the uh, hundred years of the RAF. Well, it was like a hundred days ago. Some reason it was April first when it first formed in 1918, but they're celebrating it now anyway. Basically, I think a hundred days later. Um, so there's a big hundred plane fly past that's going to fly by uh, Buck Palace, I think. And as I went outside to to test the camera, there's these like what are they called Chinooks, all flying by. I was like, how cool is that? Let's test the camera filming then, then, I suppose. I mean, part of me thought, oh, I should have my Pixel 2 XL with me because it's going to be, perhaps be a better picture, but at the same time, nothing better than an actual real-world test of the video camera. And I would say, generally, I don't think it looks too bad. It looks okay. I did a bit of film of the back garden as well. Just sort of standard back garden footage and yeah it looks I think it looks quite crisp I then took a selfie with the front facing camera it looks okay I then did a portrait photo um, that has to be the main camera though so that's kind of and I used the volume button as the shutter release and generally it's not too bad there's a little bit of a haze I think kind of around my ears and things if you zoom in but it's not a bad photo and then another picture out the front you know, it's all the grass is dead. We've been in the middle of like a heat wave uh, for like three or four weeks now, and things are generally dying, which is not great, I suppose. And then another final photo this is when I first saw the the Chinooks. I was down, where was I? I don't even know where that is, side of the flats, and took a quick picture of that. So I think all in all, the actual quality of the pictures and the video, it seems pretty good. Obviously, I'm gonna do much better testing between now and the review. I'll get a few sample videos um, uploaded as well, and hopefully in different light conditions and that kind of thing. The actual app, for enough, so I tried the app, and then I think it must have updated at some point, even in just the 10 minutes, well, when I was updating the apps, I guess. Um, so on the on the one side here, we change what we're looking at, be it setting, I think we can scroll through them, yep. Oh, it's gone away now. So when I selected portrait, we're in portrait mode, but then I'd come out to camera mode and it gave me a little box saying, but portrait mode will stay there until you choose something else. So even if I go into video, portrait's still there, I can come back to portrait, back to video, but then if I go back to settings, it removes it, and if I choose something else, the dual camera actually cut out, so, oh, I didn't, oh, I should have tried that, shouldn't I? Anyway, I will, I will try that. Well, I'll keep, What's back button? Is that another back button? Anyway, um, so cut out look stays there until I go back into settings and I choose something else. Text scanner, that's interesting. Uh, and look, it says it's recognizing the text. Oh. <laughs> it's got the one word. Um, edit, Tabby, you can edit the text. Okay, well. What else to know? What else to know? Google Lens, again, when I first opened the app, it had its own kind of object recognition in there, but now it uses Google Lens look, which is fine. Uh, close that. We've got various different modes. HDR is on by default. Flash, timer, what is that one? Oh, active photo, so we can have the old sort of couple of seconds of movement. On the video, you basically just get to have the torch on or off while you're filming. Uh, face filters, I don't know what that one is actually. So, oh, can we turn the, can we not turn the camera around to be me? No? No, maybe not, okay. Anyway, so, and obviously there is the front, front face in there, look. And as we've seen, we can, do the old double twist. So that's the camera. Obviously, we go into albums there. So there we go. Um, 
I think. Oh, I didn't actually look in the settings, did I? Let's. So settings looks very stock Android. Let's just check. Uh, system update. One Android eight point zero point zero. We are up to date. I can't remember if this one's included in the beta or not. I don't think it is. Um, so yeah, pretty stock. Pretty stock looking uh, settings, to be honest, which is quite nice. So, I think early impressions are it's a really nice phone for sort of 230, 240, whatever it is. It seems to be a little bit of a dust magnet. But, uh, but yeah, really nice phone. Performance at this point it seems pretty good. Um, obviously, I'm going to use this for. I don't know because I've got a, I've got a weekend away where I might I might default back to my Pixel 2 XL because I just need it for the mount in the car to be able to use it to navigate. But I'll probably take it with me to take some pictures and stuff like that. So I don't know. In the next week or so, I'll get the review done. Like I said, I'll do other videos on the camera and the video samples and stuff like that. Um, post any questions in the comments down below, and I will try and remember to look at them and answer them in the review. Um, but yeah, I do. I, I quite like the look of this. I keep buying all these sort of things that I think, oh, I'll keep that as a backup phone. And then I sell it on so I can buy another phone. Um, anyway, so let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. But for now, my name's Andy, and I'll catch you all again soon. Well done, and thank you for making it to the end of the video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, you might want to click the little fellow that should hopefully appear about here to subscribe. Um, you may also want to check out some of my other videos, which are going to appear somewhere there. Um, also, come and have a look at my website, androidandy.uk. Um, there is also a forum. Come and say hello on the forum if you've got any questions about things or requests for me to review things or anything else. Just come and have a chat on the forum.